bit about it. Uh, Key was getting out to a good start. Good confidence builder. They're hanging in there, no doubt about it. Leading by two at the half. And Coach uh, Reg Barker has to be uh, very pleased with their performance thus far and hopeful that they'll keep it up in the second half. And the Herman Huskies have got to get some more offense from Shannon Richards. He's been very quiet this half. Yes, uh, Richards got out to a slow start. Never did get rolling with only four points. And more importantly, uh, Mark Small with their key scorer throughout the course of the series in a bit of trouble with three fouls. Well, Rick, I guess we got a couple of shots to make. They've uh, graciously asked us to take part in the free throw competition here, so... We'll attempt a couple. I don't well, know how many we'll make. We'll go over and see how close we'll come. You brought the whole team. Come yeah. on in, boys. Here. Kitchen's right through so here. Well. Did you win today? The difference between an ordinary day and an extraordinary one isn't really so much what you do, but who you're doing it for.
whenever someone, somewhere, serves someone else, there is truly cause to celebrate. Hey, there's that kid. A message from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Ever played baseball? Come on, we would love to we have could really you. really use your Okay. In Cornerbrook, you're watching Cable Atlantic Cable 9, your community channel. Welcome back to Herman Collegiate. Just getting ready to start the second half of this contest. The Regina Knights currently lead the Herman Huskies by a score of 34-32. And Rick, by the uh, performance we had there at the halftime, I don't think either team are going to be calling on us for our services in this series. No, I don't think you got any worries about that. Uh, not exactly a spectacular shootout. But I'm sure we've got a spectacular second half ahead of us. Well, I think the viewers are more interested in seeing these 10 guys on the floor right now than they are you and I, so... We'll get back to the second half, just about ready to pour the tip off. Been an outstanding contest. Again, Don, we were talking game number two. Uh, a blowout of that magnitude was uh, really the exception to the rule. To this point, uh, the other three contests in the series have been uh, outstanding. Well, we mentioned it at the time, just a super, super game for the Herman Huskies. And it, ha it happened to come at the same time as the Regina Knights were due to have a bad game, and that resulted in the score being 100-69 to for the Huskies. Take a look at the top scores to this point. Frank White leads the Regina Knights with 14. Dean Barker has six. Jason Trask, Ian Cook, and TJ Power with four apiece, and Jamie Hearn with two. For the Huskies, Mark Smallwood has 11. Corey Rideout has six. Bernie Hughes and Shannon Richards have four. David Merton, three. Dean Porter and Michael Barrett have two points apiece. And again, that big total, uh, Shannon Richards with only four points so far, Don. Yeah, that's the Regina Knights. They've got to be happy about that. They managed to shut Shannon Richards off the boards. But one thing about it, it wasn't a matter of the Regina Knights playing super defense against Shannon Richards. He just wasn't having the shots drop at all. He had a lot of shots in the first half. And unfortunately for him, he just had two drop. He even missed two from the uh, free throw line. So that's something you don't always see from Shannon Richards. And again, this crowd trying to lead their team on to a three-peat of the city championship. And the night crowd here to try and get their team so that they can see them again on the home court in a game number five. And we should mention here the slight delay caused by some water around the uh, outside area of the court uh, that caused by fans coming in and out of the gymnasium. Understandable with the amount of people that are coming. There's quite a traffic jam by the front doors. And certainly this being the middle of winter, snow tends to accumulate on boots. Boots tend to hit the floor, and hence we have water on the floor. There's your chemistry, biology explanation of why there's water on the floor. I was going to say, uh, how strange uh, snow in western Newfoundland. <laughs> in so both teams will get an extra couple of minutes to catch their breath. We'll see... We see Reg Barker on your left, Bob Richards on your right. Reg, the head coach of the Regina Knights, Bob, assistant coach of the Herman Huskies. That's interesting to see, Rick. Uh, just a few short years ago, you'd never see this in Cornerbrook High School basketball where you go with a, a coaching team almost. It used to be years ago, just one coach for each team. They, they took care of everything on the team. And now you see both teams, both the Regina Knights and the Herman Huskies using two coaches each. Of course, Mike Barrett, the head coach of the Huskies, assisted by Bob Richards, and Reg Barker for the Knights, assisted by Tyrone Power. And there we see the referees, Wayne Robertson on your left, Jim Keogh on your right. Our off-court official is Darla Norum. And folks, we're ready for action. Uh, safe to say, Rick, in a two-point ball game with the Knights leading, this is going to be a hot, hot second half. The Herman Huskies have got to come out flying here. They can't let the Knights establish any sort of offensive output here. If they do, they could be facing a game five back at Regina High School, and that won't be an easy one for the Huskies to win. No, I think uh, their goal pretty much, uh, you know, from their point of view, was to win a game in Regina it's going to be awfully tough if uh, the Knights come in here and pull this one out uh, for the Huskies to go back and take another one there uh, it's got to do something to the morale of the Huskies too to have the Knights come in here and, and take a win off their uh, their own court 
I mean, Herman did it at Regina last game, and that was a big boost to the Herman Huskies. They came out, and they were just so high after that win because they stopped the night in their home, home building, and they thought, hey, we're coming back to our own building. We get a chance to win the city championship. If Regina happens to pull out a victory here, that'll just sink the Herman Huskies, and that'll, they'll start thinking about it and start playing on their minds. Then they've got to go back down to Regina on Monday night for game five. That could be a big factor. And I guess, Don, the answers to all our hypothetical questions probably to be addressed in these next 20 minutes. Here we go, back to the live action. Shannon Richards now with it. Smallwood and White fighting underneath. Smallwood's got to be careful with three fouls already. Doesn't want to pick up another one early. Mike Barrett. Dean Porter tried to apply the screen. Barrett fires the shot. No good. Smallwood underneath. Basket won't count, but I think we might have Frank White on the foul. Nope, Mark Smallwood is fouled with the foul. That's his fourth. We'll see it here. No, now. we have a correction. Wayne Robertson's coming over to the... Uh... I'm sure the Husky bench, uh, a couple of heart palpitations when the call was made, but Wayne Robertson immediately came over and corrected. That's what we saw in the replay there. Mark Smallwood was going up for the ball. Frank White actually came down over the top of Smallwood. Barrett with a big three-pointer. And what a way for the Huskies to start the second half. Frank White. Down low. Ian Cook. Shots up. Front rim. No good. Smallwood rebound. And this is where the Huskies can be so dangerous if they get a run going on you in this home court. Shannon Richards will try to keep their intensity going. You see, again, players slipping all over the court, Don. A lot of moisture out there. Shannon Richards now to Mackey. Chris Mackey. In and out, no good. Dean Barker with the rebound over to TJ Power. Power, nice pass down low. Ian Cook. You can count it, and he was fouled. Mike Barrett on the foul call. And Ian Cook now goes to the line to try to give the Knights a two-point lead. That's six on the night for Ian Cook. And again, uh, credit another nice assist to T.J. Power. T.J. Power that time saw a little hole there. He couldn't quite get the ball over the head, so he elected to make the bounce pass. Ian Cook with a heads-up play. He saw that bounce pass coming. Picked it up and put it off the glass. Shot is no good. Dean Barker, though, back up with it. Gets his rebound again and misses again and tries again and Dean Porter with a block but they've got him on the foul and the crowd down underneath the basket thought it was a we'll see how the replay Porter, Parker misses the first one goes up again that time Dean Porter up to slap the ball away got a piece of Barker and Barker goes to the line to shoot too and again more sweat flying underneath the basket and again, the persistence paying off there by Dean Barker. Excellent effort on the offensive class. Dean Barker, two for four in this contest from the line. And there's two for five coming into this series. I mean, Don, uh, you, the fans watching at home can't get an idea of what it's like, how hot. It's almost like a sauna in here. It's very humid. Definitely quite warm. This gymnasium is a, is a small gymnasium. We've talked about the court size a number of times, but the gymnasium itself is a, a small room, if you will. And the heat with these many people obviously will build up. These people have been here since 6 o'clock this evening. It's, it's now about two and a half hours later almost. Definitely the heat's going to build up here. Dean Barker at the line. The first shot is up. Don't go off of my drinking table. Oh, Gumbo, be quiet, man. He's just getting a checkup. Miss those foul shots are ever so crucial. The second shot is good. There's your score. Knights leading 37-35. Fight is called on the push. And that's a big call on Frank White. Big call on Frank White. It looked like he had the rebound cleanly, but Jim Keough there to make the call. And that's the fourth personal foul of this contest for Frank White. 18-31 still to play in this game, and Frank White is in major foul trouble. One more, and he's gone from this contest. 
We'll see on the replay here. Keep your eye on White, number nine. He goes up with Smallwood. Back to the live action now. Shannon Richards shot, no good. The cold streak continues for him. Dean Porter, though, got the rebound. Mackey back to Richards. Richards down low, Smallwood working on Barker. Shots up and good. We had to wait a little bit on that one as it rolled around the top of the rim, but it did fall. Gives Smallwood 13, and the score is tied at 37. Dean Porter on the reach in, Don, and that may be four on him, if I'm not mistaken. That's four on Dean Porter as well, so a couple of big players for both teams in foul trouble here. We saw Frank White pick up his fourth. He was checked, he checked out of the contest in favor of Jamie Hearn, and I'm sure Porter will be gone before long. Mike Blair will want to keep him on the bench in case his Huskies need him later on in this contest. Mackey on the rebound, but there's a giveaway. Shannon Richards tried to hit Smallwood, but Smallwood wasn't even looking, and T.J. Power made the steal. He controls down low. Shot up by Cook and in. Well, Ian that's Cook with eight. That's twice in a row, Rick. We've seen T.J. Power come down and make that little bounce pass in the middle of the key. Well, Michael Barrett has got his shooting eyes on in this second half with another three-pointer. That's eight on the game, six in the half. Steal oh. by Shannon Richards. Uncontested lay-in. And how quickly the tide can turn. 42-39, Huskies lead. They've scored five unanswered. And an over and back violation against the Knights, and the Huskies now want a bit of a roll down. Well, the Huskies in the last five points have run a 5-0, and they get the ball back again, and Regina coach Reg Barker calls a timeout and a desperately need a timeout. His team came out, and they held their own to start the second half, but in the last minute or so, they've fallen apart a little bit. They're lacking a little defensively, and the result has been Herman Huskies putting in five unanswered points thus far. And that was a very smart time out there by the Regina coaching staff. Obviously, they saw things not going very well out there. And I guess, Rick, this is a little between break theater. So yes, can. this is a, quite a scene here. Don, they're getting more inventive every year. We're going to have a look now at the replay. Michael Barrett's big three-point shot, and then the steal immediately thereafter by Shannon Richards. There's Barrett from outside, three points. And a nice turnaround and bring it down the court. Shannon Richards there to make the steal and goes in with the layup on the left side. You see here, knocks it out, gets the ball back. Porter over to Richards. Richards walks in all alone, uncontested. And that's known as a five-point blitz in the course of about 10 seconds of play. And that's definitely changed the complexion of this ball game. Shannon Richards to Barrett. Barrett's really helped to pick up the slack with those two major outside shots. Doesn't get the roll this time. And now again, we've got a problem with the floor. The referees call a stoppage in play obviously there's still some problem with moisture and condensation built up on the floor well I mean Jim Keogh that that instruction was simple enough Don that we got to get the floor mopped up or someone's going to get hurt out here it's a bit of a strange move the referees and the four coaches are leaving the gymnasium not quite sure what's what's going on here the coaches and the referees have just left their players sitting on the bench. Last thing we heard from the officials was that they've got to get the floor mopped up. We see a couple of people out with a mop now. But again, we go back to the size of this crowd. I don't think I've ever seen this gym this packed. This is an unbelievable... Uh... And I think the, the main problem is the front lobby of the building. I noticed coming into the game tonight... Uh, the front lobby is uh, directly in front of the gymnasium door, so if people want to get to the gymnasium, they have to trot across the, the lobby area. Everyone who got into the game tonight, and there's, there's got to be uh, 500 people here, every one of them had to walk through that lobby. There's a lot of moisture out on the floor. Then we had the halftime break. People started going out again, getting the water on their boots. 
So now I think the officials are going out just to control that area out there because people are still going back and forth the, the gymnasium to the lobby as the coaches are making their way back now. And we're going to have ourselves a break. And the teams are going back to the dressing room. Well, I just got the notice from referee Jim Keel that the floor is too wet to continue. The humidity and condensation is built up. They're going to stop the game for about 10 minutes. They're going to send everybody out of the gymnasium, which is going to be a task in itself. So everybody's going to be asked to leave the gymnasium. They're going to try and hopefully dry the floor out that way. And then we'll get back to this ball game. This is Bob Richards making the announcement now, the assistant coach of the Herman Huskies. So there's 16.53 left to play in this game. The Herman Huskies leading the contest by a score of 42-39. We're going to take this opportunity to take a brief timeout. And we'll be back right after this break. <laughs> Keeping up with the fast pace of music, rock and roll, and television can actually be very stressful. There's deadlines and demands on my time and my music and my energy. There can be a lot of pressure. That's why I find it so important to stop and take the time to turn it all off. And go for a walk, or ride my bike, or listen to Mozart. It works every time. Oh, baby! That was a quick one. Where were we? Just on the way after that short break, the score 49-32 for the Herman Huskies. Back to the play-by-play -play with Rick LaFitte. Okay, Trask outside now. T.J. Power drives low. Shot's good. Six for Power. 42-41 is your score. A one-point lead for the Huskies. Down low to Smallwood. Smallwood being watched by Barker. Tipped away by Barker and out of bounds. Smallwood wanted a foul call. Didn't get it. Good defense by Dean Barker. Don, uh, the crowd uh, took off for a little bit. They're all back, and it is uh, considerably cooler in here. Well, that's the thing. We touched on it just before we went to our break. Uh, the floors, as Mike verifies, all alone under the basket there for two points. That was but a super pass by Merton. Mike Barrett all alone under the basket. But just touching on what happened again, uh, the, the, the building here is really hot. The gymnasium was extra warm. Condensation started to build up on the floor. His players are falling down everywhere. The referees decided it just wasn't safe. So they closed the, the gymnasium off, asked everybody to leave, opened up all the doors for a few minutes to get some breeze in here and dry up the floor a little bit. Lovely move by Ian Cook. That's 10 for him, and he's hit double digits in each of the four games, Don. Well, Derek. He, Ian Cook is the type of player they need to have hitting on all cylinders. An enormous three-point shot there by Chris Mackey, his biggest basket of the series. T.J. Power drives the length. No good. Small with the rebound. Huskies leading 47-43. And a couple of unlikely players hitting three-point shots in this contest. David, David Merton had one in the first half, and then Chris Mackey came back with one here just a few moments ago for the Herman Huskies. And that was a huge shot. T.J. Power behind the back dribble. Double team gets it to Trask. Trask over to Cook. Cook over to Hearn. Hearn fires. Good. Jamie Hearn, he has not scored much in this series, Don, but when he has, it has been timely. We should mention for viewers who uh, can't recall, Jamie Hearn in there for Frank White, who has four fouls. Richards for three. No good again. Shannon Richards, his shooting still a bit cold. Tough defense, though. Gets back to T.J. Power, 47-45, your score. Ian Cook from outside. 
front rim. Rebound goes to Mackey. 14.20 to go. Smallwood down low. Makes the move. Shots up no good. Barrett fights underneath. That's no good. Parker falls again. And a travel is called. Well, in the first half, Donna was the Knights uh, using the offensive glass to get some second and third opportunities. This time, it was the Huskies. Well, the Herman Huskies are controlling the play under the boards right now. As we see, Mark Smallwood comes up with the pass under the boards, and he drives up strong, made the first fake. Got Parker to commit himself, and then Smallwood just went up and had the easy lay-in. Smallwood with 15, down low. Ian Cook. And both clubs, uh, Don, after this break, uh, seeming to get their offenses in gear. Well, I think that was the big key. The, uh, the Regina Knights and the Herman Huskies both had an extra long break. They came up and played a couple of minutes of the second half, then went back in the dressing room for about another five or ten minutes. Gave them a little opportunity to catch the wind. They rested up a little more, and now they're both pretty well back at full strength. Mackey thought he'd try to drain another three-pointer. Didn't pay off that time as it was an air ball. Knights get the possession. Vich in the contest. He'll play a key role, handling the ball along with TJ Power. Ball goes out of bounds, and we've got a foul call. Mackey is the violator. Right in front of our broadcast position at half court. Cook taking it out right in front of us. Gets it to Power. Power to Trask. Trask back to TJ Power who fires from outside. No good, and out of bounds. Husky ball. 49 to 47 is your score. Herdman leading by two on their home court here as they try to wrap up the series. Smallwood underneath is hit hard. That may be Ian Cook, and that's his fourth, Don. And once again, we saw this in game three. The Regina Knights, as we see on the replay here, that foul to Cook. The Regina Knights getting their big men in foul trouble. Ian Cook, we mentioned, fouled out with about five minutes to play in the third game of the series down at Regina High School. Ian Cook and Frank White both have four fouls now for the Regina Knights. A couple of big players to lose. There's still over 13 minutes to play in this game. That's a big problem for the Knight coaching staff as Smallwood fires no good. Parker on the rebound, falls on the floor, gets it to Cook. Crowd wanted a traveling violation, but they didn't get it. TJ Power now, watched closely by Merton. Nifty dribbling technique. Down low, nice pass to Cook. Up and in. And again, the Herdman Huskies coming out using that full court press. They got most of their energy back after that extended break. And they're coming out flying here at the full court press. But the Regina Knights now know how to counter that now. They're coming back and they're finding the open man under the basket. Shannon Richards is off again. Ian Cook has really picked it up, Don. 14 points for him. TJ Power stops at the three-point line. Looks for a man inside. Gets it to Cook. He's been hot this Now gets it back out of Trask. Trask will fire. Left open, didn't hit it though. Rebound underneath. Smallwood fighting for it. Husky possession. Corey Rideout checks in for Michael Barrett now. Smallwood, the top scorer for the Huskies with 15 to this juncture. Frank White and Ian Cook have 14 apiece for the Knights. 49-49. Shannon Richards over to Mackey. Michael Barrett takes to the hoop. Inside misses the shot. Tough defense underneath by Ian Cook. Played a role there in the missed shot. Long pass, Vich corrals. Huskies picking up the pressure a little bit. Shot from outside, doesn't go. There's Cook underneath. Can't get it to go though. Tipped up, almost over. And finally. Corey Rideout gets it for the Huskies, but some good work by the Knights there. Michael Barrett now, up and in. Barrett with 12, Don, and he's looking to assert himself offensively, doing a good job driving to the hoop. 12 points in this game, 10 of those coming here in the second half, and, and six points coming by three-point shots. He's sunk two three-point shots here in the second half. Trask. Tried to get it to Barker, who threw it away. Mackey will take it over to Rideout, and it's good. Nice pass by Chris Mackey. And the Huskies lead it, 53-49. Corey Rideout now being hammered from behind. Moves in, can't get the shot to go. Gets his own rebound, though. Still with it. And Smallwood knocks it away and picks it up. And the Huskies now with a bit of a roll with a chance to take a six-point lead. 
Shannon Richards. Huskies have picked it up defensively in Ajdan, and it's helped them to move out to this tiny lead of four points. Mackey over to Shannon Richards, down low. Smallwood over Barker. Can't get it to drop. Ian Cook with the rebound. Again, DJ the key Power. to this series is the Regina Knights has got to control the boards both offensively and defensively. They've got to get guys like Dean Barker up to pick up those rebounds. If not, you're going to have Mark Smallwood under the basket grabbing those rebounds and then getting the easy points. Second personal foul on Chris Mackey. Mackey seeing a lot of court time in this one, Don, and he's making the most of it, turning in a good performance to this point. Well, again, Dean Porter with four fouls. That's a big reason why Chris Mackey is in this contest. Frank White back in there. Trask over to Vich. Vich will leave it for power. TJ Power. Watch closely by Richards. Trask down low. Frank White makes the offensive move. Shot is up. No good. Rebounded by Smallwood. Shannon Richards. Will he push? No. Slows up. Down low. Smallwood now. Watching Barker. Corey Rideout can't get it to go. Barker and Power fight for it underneath. Barker gets it. The big man gets it over to TJ Power. Nice behind the back dribble. And we've got Corey Rideout on the chop. Corey Rideout's first foul of the contest, and that's the story of the game. The Herman Huskies lead 53-49, 9.59 to play here in the second 20 minutes. Frank White outside, shots up, good. That is 16 points for Frank White. Michael Barrett now, will he try to answer? Barrett being hounded by White. Mackey, open shot. That's a couple of big baskets for Chris Mackey, Don. That's five on the evening for him. Five points, including a three-pointer. As we mentioned, Mackey getting a lot of court time this evening due to the fact that Dean Porter has four fouls. He picked up those four fouls fairly early in the game. There you see the football violation kicked by a defender. Frank White outside. Shots tipped, rebound underneath, up and in. Craig Vitch getting the bucket. Rideout being hounded by Vitch. Gets it to Mackey. TJ Power on him. Rideout. Nice pass underneath the Smallwood. And again, the Regina Knights just aren't controlling Mark Smallwood. They haven't been able to do this all series long. Mark Smallwood very basically just running the show here tonight. Frank White drives the length of the court. That's 18 points for him. That last basket for Smallwood gave him 17. Michael Barrett now drives. Don, you talk about some sustained action. That's 14 for Barrett. Well, we noted early in this game that both teams are coming out getting a lot of shots, but nothing was dropping for them. That's totally changed around here. They've get, they're getting a lot of shots, and as we're seeing, everything is dropping. These two clubs definitely lighting it up. Fifty-nine, fifty-seven. Your score, Huskies lead by a deuce. Down low, Smallwood takes Barker. Shot is good. Both of these clubs very hot from the field these last few minutes. 19, Mark Smallwood with 19. 19 points for Mark Smallwood. Dean Barker has just got to control Mark Smallwood a bit more. Barker's got to be more aggressive on the boards. He's just got one foul in this contest. He can afford to be a little more aggressive and take those fouls should they come his way. That's 20 for Frank White, and Bob Richards doesn't like the way that White is slicing through the defenders, and he's called a timeout for the Huskies. We want to call a timeout and let Frank White cool down a little bit here. But, Rick, we were talking about the battle between Mark Smallwood and Dean Barker. Dean Barker is just letting Mark Smallwood run him, and that's the way it's been going the whole series long. Smallwood started out with 16 points in Game 1, up that to 26 in Game 2, and further increased that to 29 points in Game 3. And Mark Small was well on his way to another 20 point plus 20 plus point game here in game four. Dean Barker has gotta, dominated, no doubt about that, Don. Barker's just got to get in there and he's got to control more. He's got to go up for those block shots. He's got to take what you call a good foul when he gets the opportunity. In other words, you can't let Mark Smallwood park himself under the net and get those easy layups where somebody passes him the ball 
he simply lays it off the glass. That's where Dean Barker's going to go in and take a swat at that ball, try to knock something loose, try to make something happen and cause a couple of turnovers. He can afford to do it. He's just got one foul. Well, this has been a beauty. 61-59. Huskies leading it. 7.41 to go. And there we are, right in the middle of all this lunacy at times, but uh, the crowd enjoying it. This has been a heck of a game. As we mentioned, the fans here this evening just jamming the place. We can see from our broadcast position, we're virtually surrounded here. And Shannon Richards delivers. That is eight for him. Nothing but mess. And if the Huskies get Richards on track, that could be a big key down the stretch, Don. Well, if Shannon Richards starts to heat up all of a sudden, the Regina Knights are in big trouble because they already have Mark Smallwood hitting on all cylinders. If Frank, if, rather, if Shannon Richards happens to do the same thing, the Regina Knights are going to need a heck of a defensive effort. For the first time in about the last three minutes, I think we actually had a miss on that occasion. Huskies can take a six-point lead with a basket. Dean Pointer underneath. Gets it back out. Corey Rideout may have three in the key. And that is indeed the call. Big turnover there for the Herman Huskies. And PJ again. Power has it batted away. Corey right out with it now. Over to Dean Porter. Porter's not a threat from there. He'll look for a better offensive player from the outside. Barrett to Shannon Richards. Trask up on him tightly. Richards, no room to drive. Gets it back to right out. Right out. Gets it back. Frank White tried to make the steal. Michael Barrett. Foul from behind by TJ Power, and he'll go to the line. Just a second personal foul for TJ Power. And that's the type of foul I was talking about a little earlier that Dean Barker needs to take. What you call a good foul that time. Mike Barrett, who's been hitting fairly well in this contest, is going up for an easy shot. TJ Power came over, tried to knock the ball away, happened to make contact with Barrett, but he puts him on the line. Michael Barrett misses the shot, though. And that's why you can afford to take that chance, to take the foul and put a player on the line because there is, an there is obviously an opportunity for him to miss. Well, the crowd's into it, but on that occasion, a little bit too much into it. Barrett misses the shot. Trask, double team. Goes off Shannon Richards' leg out of bounds. Knights retain possession. 6.24 to go. Huskies lead 63-59. This is a key possession here, Don. Well, they definitely need to score a point here. Dean yeah. Barker, nowhere near the bucket. Way too strong, and it's taken by Barrett. Shannon Richards gets it ahead to Rideout. Rideout loses it to Power. Big steal by the Knights. TJ Power. And he throws it away. Well, Reg Barker's got to call a timeout here. His team is starting to fall apart a little bit offensively. It's the last two times down the court they've made, they've turned that ball over. That time we saw TJ Power make a bad pass. Before that, Dean Barker with a shot that almost looked like a pass. It was nowhere near the net. It was well over the net. It almost looked like Barker went up. Saw there was no shot there and tried to pass it to somebody who wasn't there. Smallwood with a miss. Barker underneath to clean up on the defensive glass and get the rebound. Huskies have picked up their pressure in the last few minutes, Don. TJ Power, cross-court pass taken by Trask. Over to Frank White. He might try to make something happen. And does. Frank White with 22 points. And a steal by TJ Power, but he's out of bounds. About three rows into the crowd there. Again, we've mentioned how close the crowd is to the court. 63-61 your score, 522 to go. Herdman Huskies leading the Regina Knights. Game four, Cornerbrook Boys High School Basketball Championship. Best of five series. Hope you're enjoying all the action on Cable Atlantic. David Murden from outside. Tried to find a man down underneath. The pass for Smallwood goes astray, taken by Barker. Frank White, watch closely by Merton. White's done an outstanding job on the offense, but he threw it away there. 
And again, Rick, we're seeing the Regina Knights just turning that ball over offensively. They've got to slow down the pace a little bit. It's way too hot to be playing fast break, fast break, fast break. You slow down, you take every chance you can get, but you play a slow, methodical type of game. You think about everything you're doing. And that's five fouls for Dean Porter. Just watching TJ Power asking the referee if the clock continued to run after that whistle went. And that's a big spark plug for the Huskies to lose. Dean Porter gives his team a lot of grit and determination underneath the boards, and he is fouled out of this contest with only two points. Well, we talked about uh, teams needing a big defensive effort here if they hope to win in the next four minutes and 53 seconds. This is a two-point ball game. And I think the Herman Huskies just lost their best defensive player, without a doubt, Dean Porter. He's always a spark plug. He's always out there diving after the ball. And we'll see the last play there. Porter's foul with the reaction. A little upset with that. He knows that it was a spit foul. He knows he's gone for the game. That's frustration showing on his face there. Four minutes, 58 seconds to play, and Dean Porter is out of the contest. And now the, the Herdman Huskies have got a counter with a non-starter. We noticed in game three that they had no points off the bench. All the points, all the points scored in the game came from their five starters. You see, this is actually a good view right under our broadcast table here. We told you, folks, people are sitting everywhere in this building, and that goes for our table as well. Would you say that uh, they're packed in like sardines, I guess? Uh... <laughs> There's the scores, scores table. table. We're, we're just beside that, to the left of that. And again, another big possession for the Regina Knights here, down by two points. They can't afford to miss this one and have Herdman come back and score two and take a four-point lead. They've got an opportunity to tie this game now. They've got to seize the moment. We've been commenting on Frank White. He's really been looking to take it to the basket, even with those four fouls done. Smallwood gets it back. Big turnover. Well, that's exactly what we said that Regina Nice didn't need. Could be a big blow if Herdman could score a basket here. And if you were to think the Huskies would have the lead with Shannon Richards with only eight points, I'm sure the Herdman coaches will take that. We've got a push off on Barrett, I believe. Make it Mackey on the screen. And that's Mackey's third foul. He'll see a large portion of the remainder of this contest now that Porter is fouled out of the game. 4.15 to go, knocked away. Huskies again, aggressive on the defense. T.J. Power being watched by Shannon Richards. Power gets it to Frank White. Again, White drives the lane and makes the shot. Frank White has been a one-man wrecking crew for the Knights. 24 points. Well, Frank White knows what to do when he gets the ball. He's going to drive to the lane. He's going to go to the hoop. That's what the Regina Knights here. They need a lot of offense, and Frank White's just going to do it. And look at that play by White. Even with the four fouls, he makes the block. That's the effort. Tied at 63, getting down to the final, three and a half minutes. Trask, can't get it to go. Parker underneath, up and in. And Rick, the intensity is certainly starting to pick up here now. Regina Knights with a two point lead. Smallwood underneath takes the shot. That's 21 for him. Mackey tried to tip, Rideout gets the steal. Rideout a wild shot, Mackey gets the rebound. They've got Rideout on the foul. And Corey Rideout definitely upset at that last call. He thought he was fouled by Frank White as he went up for that layup. The referee said no, and then Rideout turns around and commits a foul himself. Watch this now, he looks like Frank White was up over him. But the referee said no on that one. Frank White got all the ball. And then Corey Rado turns around and draws a foul of his own. Well, the Huskies had felt as though Chris Mackey had been fouled as he tried his shot. You see an exhausted Frank White being let out on the court. What an effort he has turned in. Well, it's definitely going to be a tough game for these players. We mentioned time and time again how hot and humid it is in here as T.J. Power will go to the line now. Bonus situation for the... Regina Knights, but the heat has got to take a lot out of these players. They've been playing flat out for the last hour and a half now, and certainly the energy is starting to dwindle away a little. 
And again, Don all coming down to free throws. T.J. Power failing to capitalize, and we remain deadlocked at 65, under three minutes to go. You cannot get any closer than this, folks. Shannon Richards. Over to Rideout. Seaborn. Back to Rideout. Rideout will take it. Nice pass underneath. Seaborn drives the lane. Shots up and good. And you talk about an opportune time for your first basket of the game, Don. Paul Seaborn with a left-handed baby hook as he drove across the middle of the lane. Well, Paul Seaborn seems to be a player in this series who picks up the big baskets. We know that in game two up here, he was the player who scored the 100th point, the historic point, I guess you could say, for the Herman Huskies. And this time he checks into the ball game and puts his Huskies up by a score of 67-65 with a little over two minutes to play in this game. So Paul Seaborn, not the type of player to score a lot of points. He's... Uh, Averaging just 2.6 per game in this series, but he knows when to hit those baskets. Don, we can't emphasize it enough as we head down the final two and a half minutes how important those uh, trips to the charity stripe are. TJ Power failed to capitalize, and as a result, Seaborn came right down, got the basket for the Huskies, and they lead it by two. Well, the Regina Knights are in a bonus situation now, so any foul taken by the Herman Huskies is going to put the Regina Knights on the line, and the Knights have really got to start hitting those free throws. They need every point. I mean, in a contest like this, as we see Seaborn's last basket coming up here on a replay, in a contest like this, you've got to hit every free throw that you get a chance to make because one point could make the difference in this contest. I mean, we're talking a two-point difference right now with 2.32 to play, and it's going to come down to the final shots. There's no doubt about that. And if you're not making the free throws, that could be a decisive factor in a team's loss. And again, Don, year in and year out, these past three or four years, we have seen just how closely matched these two schools are when it comes to basketball. Outstanding action. Frank White now gets it to Trask. Trask makes the move on Seaborn. Kern underneath. Can't get it to go. That was very tough to see what happened there, Don. Jason uh, Trask was trying to save it in bounds, and we had some like, sort of call. Yeah, it looked like one of the fans grabbed the ball as Trask tried to save it. He, uh, the ball was out of bounds. Trask dove out of bounds to try to save that ball. One of the fans grabbed it, and as a result, it, uh, it resulted in fan interference, and I retained possession of the ball. Okay, so a crucial play there. Knights can't get it to go, and it's Husky ball. Two ten to go. Again, another key basket coming up. Another key possession for the Herman Huskies. A four-point lead with less than two minutes to play. Could be too much for the Regina Knights to overcome. Shannon Richards is called on the offensive foul. And again, the Huskies can almost get to the doorstep, but they can't quite put the Regina Knights away. Full credit to the Knights for coming back time after time. Very gritty effort on both teams. Frank White can't get through though. Corey Rideout gets it ahead to Richards. Richards is fouled. Layup does not go. Dean Barker is the culprit. And again, that's the type of play you're gonna see more of from Dean Barker. He couldn't afford to let Shannon Richards have that layup because with Shannon Richards, he's gonna stick that with his eyes closed. So Dean Barker that time went in, went totally after the ball and puts Richards on the foul line. Richards is 0 for 2 in this game from the free throw line. Well, that was a smart play, Don. I mean, instead of giving him the layup, as you mentioned, make him go to the free throw line and earn it. Richards has been cold throughout the course of this one. And there you go. 0 for 3 for Shannon Richards in this contest. Second shot is up, and it's no good again. So there's Dean Barker getting the rebound in his play there, Don, paying some dividends for the Knights. 1.38 to go. Jamie Hearn with it. Double teamed out to Frank White. TJ Power. Power from outside. He was chopped on the shot, and TJ will go to the line with a couple of shots. And that's the fifth foul, I believe. Correct that. The fourth foul for Mark Smallwood. Well, Don, the call there was on the body after the shot was taken, I believe. Let's just wait here. There's a lot of confusion. 
and it's one, it's a one on one. It's a bonus situation. You're, you were right, Rick. It was after the shot. Before the shot, TJ Power would have had an automatic two shots from the free throw line. But in the bonus situation, he'll get one on one. Mike Barrett wants a timeout. Well, in the two point ball game, 128 to play. Smart timeout called by the Herman Huskies. They want to try and ice TJ Power a little bit. Give him a few minutes to, to think about these two shots. I mean, two shots here, if he sinks them, will tie the game up. So TJ Power is going to have a little time to think about this. And you see the two clubs in the huddle as they get set for the final preparations. Ian Cook getting a talking to from Reg Barker. And again, this is going to be a pressure situation here now for young TJ Power. Ian Cook with 14 points. Let's go over the high scores at this juncture in the game. Mark Smallwood leads the Huskies with 21. Michael Barrett with 14. Shannon Richards surprisingly with only eight. Corey Rideout also has eight. Chris Mackey with a big five. For the Knights, Frank White leading all scores with 24. Ian Cook with 14. Gene Barker with nine. Jason Trask is six, TJ Power with six, and there's your score. Herdman 65, Regina, Herdman 67, Regina 65, and TJ Power now goes to the free throw line to try to get the Knights back and even in this one. And you mentioned, Rick, that Reg Barker, coach of Regina, was talking to Ian Cook during that time. It's going to be interesting to see if, if he was maybe setting up a play and if Ian Cook is going to be the man that's a nice go-to should they need a key basket. You talk about a pressure cooker at the free throw line. The shot by Power is up, and it is no good. Rebound, though, goes to Jamie Hearn. Big offensive board for the Knights. T.J. Power now with it. Being watched by Rideout and Richards. Frank White fires from outside. It is good. Frank White with 26 points. Outstanding performance. Shannon Richards out of bounds. Huskies retain possession. 104 to go. Tied at 67. Don, a lot of Frank White's points have come after he's had those four fouls. He's just done a super job out there. Well, Frank White's never a player to be intimidated by any fouls. He's not the type of player to back down when he's got four fouls. He'll continue to play the game he plays from start to finish. Corey Rideout takes it to the basket. Shot is good. Corey right out now with 10 points, and it's a two-point Husky lead, 69-67, as we're down in the final 40 seconds to go in regulation time. T.J. Power with it. Power takes the shot. No good. That ball went off Team Barker, and Herdman gets possession of the ball. They've got a two-point lead, 32 seconds to play. You gotta think the Herman Huskies with this possession, they're gonna take the ball down court and they're gonna try to kill off as much of the clock as they can. They can afford to kill 30 seconds off. And you're probably gonna see the Regina Knights come out and one of the players in the Regina Knights who has a few fouls, probably somebody like a Dean Barker or Jamie Hearn, is gonna commit an intentional foul. Try to intentionally foul one of the Herman Husky players. Stop the clock. Try to make something happen that way. But if they don't, cause a foul of some sort or, or a turnover you're just going to have Herdman come down sit on the ball for 30 seconds actually they, they've put a second back on the clock now 33 left uh, in the game so that'll give the Regina Knights just 3 seconds to get down the court I think this is the ride out bucket uh, on the replay lovely move, Corey ride out big drive for Corey ride out The Herman Husky fans certainly quite vocal. Their team, 33 seconds away from the city championship, but the Regina Knights are going to have something to say about that in the final half minute. Oh, no doubt about that. Uh, you can't have the celebration starting too soon. There's still plenty of time left. 69 to 67 is your score. Watch for the Knights to foul a Herman Husky ball carrier as fast as they can to stop that clock as fast as they can. And will they go to Barrett to try to get the fifth foul on Frank White? T.J. Power is called, and he goes down, and Shannon Richards will go to the line, and as we've mentioned throughout the course of the contest, this has not been Shannon Richards' best shooting performance, and it's going to be incumbent on him to come through Huskies in the clutch. Inbound again. Huskies inbound again, Rick. Sorry about that. There was no bonus situation. They need another foul to stop the clock. You almost they, have to foul right away, although they, Frank they White doesn't to. want to get his fifth. They, they, need to tie, they need to stop the clock. They need somebody to foul. 
Getting down to the final 15 seconds. Corey right out. And Don, that could be it. Corey right out with the basket underneath. Corey right out goes underneath the basket and hooks it up with his left hand. That'll put the, the Herdman Huskies up by four points, and Corey Wright and Loss will go to the line and try to make this a three-point play. Just 14 seconds left in the contest. Herdman coach Bob Richards calling a timeout just to settle things down. He wants to get the fans off the court. Still 14 seconds to play in the game. Well, well here it is, now. Let's take a look Corey at it. Corey Wright a tremendous effort. He drives over from the right side to the left side of the basket underneath, swings around, lays it up, backhand, and in it goes, the celebration is on. And again, Rick, this is a key shot for the Herdman Huskies here and Corey Rideout. He sinks this free throw to give Herdman a five point lead. I don't think Regina can come back from a five point deficit in just 14 seconds. Well, Corey Rideout, Don, has been a very steady influence throughout the course of the series. 15 points in game one, 12 in game two, seven in game three and uh, in double digits in this contest with 12 points in the last two baskets he has scored probably has not made any huger in the course of his basketball life one thing i don't understand rick why the regina knights didn't commit a foul on one of the hurdle ball carriers as soon as that ball was inbounded the, the, the knights just let the clock run out and run out and you saw the result Corey right came down dropped the basket and now the knights are down by four with a lot less time left on the clock than they would have if they committed the foul and the crowd with a chant of three-peat as Corey Rideout goes to the line. The shot is up. It's no good, but it may be insignificant. Here we go. Let's count it down. Ten seconds. Frank White for three. Off the back of the iron. Very close. Rebound underneath Smallwood. And we've got a foul call, I believe. TJ Power with the foul. His fourth of the game. That's... It means not too much now. Four-point lead for the Herdman Huskies, 71, 67. Just six seconds left to play in this contest. Mark Smallwood on the line. And Rick, you don't like to say it, but unfortunately, it's pretty well all over for the Regina Knights for this year. Yes, I think it's safe to say Smallwood doesn't get the roll. Ian Cook gets it to TJ Power. They're counting it down. A three-point shot. No good. And the Herdman Huskies are the three-peaters, the city champions for another year. Three games to one, 71 to 67. Your final score in another outstanding ball game, Don. Uh, Rick, there you see that's the whole story right there. The entire gymnasium just filling the floor. The Herdman Huskies winning their third championship in a row and fourth in five years by a score of 71-67 over the Regina Knights. So we'll take a little break right now and come back and talk to head coach Mike Barrett of the Herman Huskies right after this break. The Horrors of War. I'm Cliff Chatterton of the War Amps. Those of us who experience war firsthand have a message for all Canadians. Never again. Never again must we risk global conflict. A military deterrent if necessary, but we must prevent war. Call this toll-free number to borrow our Never Again video series. This has been a message from the War Amputations of Canada. This is Cable Atlantic Cable 9, your community channel.
Back here at Herman Collegiate after the Herman Huskies have just won their third straight Cornerbrook Boys High School Basketball Championship, beating the Regina Knights 71-67 in Game 4. Uh, Regina assistant coach Tyrone Power, a tough loss for your team tonight, but full marks say he played a heck of a ball game. Uh, first, I'd like to uh, congratulate Herdman and Mr. Barrett. They uh, did a fine job, uh, deserving of the win. Uh, I thought our kids played well. Uh, the intensity level was there. The will to win was there. Uh, the foul line hurt us. Uh, we were, I think, 6 for 18. Uh, other than that, I, I don't think that we could have changed a thing. I thought we played our game, and uh, obviously uh, Mr. Barrett had his team prepared, and they played their game, and uh, they came out on top. You mentioned, to you mentioned the foul line. Do you think that was a turning point in the series, your team not being able to hit the shots in the free throw? We had trouble all year long, uh, not only in this series, but in, in the whole season long, we've had trouble on the foul line. Uh, we practiced it and practiced it and practiced it, and, uh, you know, it's just, just one of those things. It, uh, we just uh, fell short on the foul line. Tyrone, thanks very much. Congratulations on a good year. Thank you very much. And now the man of the hour, Herdman head coach Mike Barrett. Mike, this is uh, not a strange situation for you. Three in a row. Yeah, we're very proud of that. My boys have been practicing for a long time. This crowd sat the bench for years and years and years behind the other boys. They came up with me from grade seven, and this was their day in the sun, and they really wanted to do it, and what they call the three-peat. Uh, this was their last game in this gymnasium. All, almost all of them are graduating. I only have one back, two back, and uh, these boys really wanted to go out tonight and win. It was a close one, but I'm very proud of them, and they did very well. Now you've got uh, half your work finished. You've got another half to go in the Provincial 4A Championships in Mount Pearl this year. You, have your team thought about that a little bit? They sure have. Two weeks. Two weeks to go. Mm. I have a music festival in between that, and five of my guys are involved heavily <laughs> in that. That's going to cause me a little bit of trauma, but I'm sure we'll work around the music festival, get our practices in. We have to go against uh, Mount Pearl in there and maybe Regina again because it's my understanding, and uh, I don't know if anyone has told you, but we hit it all through the series that both of us have been invited to the 4A no matter who won. The series was going so well that they called us up and said, win, lose, or draw, we want you both. So we're both going. And so Regina and Herman could face each other again That's yet right. one more time this God year. God help us. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike, congratulations again on a good year right. and good luck in the provincial. I really want to tell you, Channel 9 did a marvelous job. I'm very proud of you guys. You're always there. You're terrific. Thank Thanks you very much. much. And we'll bring in Rick Lafitte now for your final comments. Rick, just a heck of a series from the opening tip off in game one to the last basket here in game four. Yeah, it never ceases to amaze. Uh, year in and year out when these two teams get together, it's almost like magic. The intensity and the competitiveness. Everyone had a great time. Great series. And in the end, the Huskies came out a very close winner for their third straight title. So that's it from Herman Collegiate here. Once again, the Herman Collegiate Huskies winning 71-67 over the Regina Knights to win their third straight Cornerbrook High School Basketball Championship. As Mike Barrett said, both teams are now prepared for the Provincial 4A Championships to be hosted by the Mount Pearl Huskies in two weeks. On behalf of Rick Lafitte, I'm Don Bradshaw. We'll see you in the future.